What's up you guys, it's Jordy here for Cinecam.net and let's first get this out of the way here. I actually cut myself this weekend, I even have a stitch in there, so now we just have to wait until that is healed up. But that is not important, what is important though is that we're going to look at five tricks on how to use your shutter speed. Janik, catch! Whoa! Nice one. First up, a big shout out to Videoblocks who are sponsoring us today. It's a huge video stock library where you can download unlimited templates, video effects, clips and so much more for a single price per year. To find out more, you can click the first link in your description below. The shutter speed is the refresh rate of your digital camera. And the slower the refresh rate is, the more motion blur we see as the sensor is exposed longer to the light. On the opposite, when the shutter speed is faster than normal, everything is super sharp as the sensor gets exposed super quickly. A normal shutter speed gives us a natural motion blur, just like the eyes would see. A simple rule is to take the double of your frame rate. So if your frame rate is 25 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 1 50th of a second. Now there are many occasions where you don't want a normal shutter speed, and here are five reasons why. The first one is to bring a more dramatic look to your action films. We're going to increase the shutter speed to around around 1 200th of a second. Now having this on a 25 FPS recording, we actually have a 4 times faster shutter speed than normal. This trick is actually used in many action or war films, and one of the most iconic ones is Saving Private Ryan to make the explosions and blood spatters more crunchy and sharper. And this even added a more realistic tone to the film. Here you can see Janik and Lorenzo boxing. The first example is with a normal shutter speed of 1 50th, and now I'm switching to 1 200th of a second, which makes the entire boxing scene more dramatic. The next shutter speed trick is the opposite. I'm going to shoot at 25 FPS with a shutter speed of 8, and this gives us a lot of motion blur, which could reflect on the dizziness of your actor who might have just taken some drugs. Now here is that same shot with a normal shutter speed. As you can see here, the whole feeling of it is just gone. Shutter speed tip number 3. If your camera can shoot slow-mo, for example at 180 frames per second, you want to set your shutter speed at 1 360th of a second. However, if you're shooting a fast action, which is very often the case, I would actually suggest setting it a bit faster. Here I'm filming at a normal shutter speed. We're seeing a normal motion blur, but the audience can't focus on the blurry details, which become more prominent in slow motion. So what I usually tend to do is set my shutter speed to 1 500th of a second, which slightly makes the moving parts crispier and sharper, and this is more pleasant for the audience as they can see the details now a lot better. The next one is about time lapses. A beginner mistake that I've seen a lot is where someone would let their camera roll and just speed up their clip in post-production. But what you're actually doing when speeding up a clip is changing its frames per second. So your shutter speed should also change, but that is something that you can't do in post-production. Some cameras like the GH5 allows you to change the FPS in camera, and that tells me that I need to change my shutter speed to 1 fourth when my FPS is 2. This gives me a natural motion blur when the clip is played back at a higher speed. If you can't film at a low FPS, then do try to set your shutter speed lower so that your motion blur is natural when you're speeding it up in post. And then the final tip for this video is when you're shooting in a dark environment. You can't increase your ISO endlessly or you will see too much noise. And that is why you don't have to be afraid to lower your shutter speeds a tiny bit, exposing your sensor more. Definitely when there's not much movement in your shot, the extra motion blur is not big of a problem. Here I'm shooting at 1 30th of a second. And the same goes when you're filming outside and you forgot your ND filter. Instead of closing your aperture all the way and having everything in focus, you could increase your shutter speed to around something of 125, and thus you can open your aperture a tiny bit more, having the background more out of focus. If you enjoyed these tips, then I'd love to invite you all to our complete DSLR filmmaking class. You'll learn every aspect of professional compositing, camera movement, the visual language, lighting, and so much more. You can find the link somewhere in the description below to learn more. Thank you all so much for watching. Like always, stay creative. We currently have a visitor here at the Cinecam studio, guys. This right here is the guy that doesn't want to get recognized. And it is Orange83, and I'm shooting a video with Jordi. I will be uploading this to my channel next month. So make sure to check out a link to his channel somewhere in the description below.